Congratulations, fellow codeheads. If you made it through parts one and two without uninstalling your favorite IDE in shame, you're stronger than most. You've endured the roasts, the memes, and the existential doubt about your code editor choices. And yet, you're still here. Still coding. Still defending Notepad++ like it's a religion. Welcome to part three of what your IDE says about you, because apparently I still have more IDEs to insult. But before we start, please like this video and subscribe to become a fellow code head. All right, back to the video. You're watching someone work in Xcode? Congrats, you found an Apple developer. They haven't touched a Windows machine since the iPod shuffle was cool. Their app is sleek, intuitive, and takes up 8 gigabytes to say hello world. They live inside the Apple ecosystem like it's a gated community. Their keyboard is probably quieter than your entire office. And yes, they use AirPods during Zoom calls. Xcode users don't just code, they storyboard. Half their time is spent dragging little UI boxes around, the other half screaming at provisioning profiles. If their app crashes, they'll just say it's a feature in beta. All right, what about the other side? We've got Android Studio. If you open Android Studio and your laptop fans don't immediately sound like a Boeing 747 preparing for takeoff, are you even coding? These devs are the caffeine-fueled troubleshooters of the mobile world. They've seen things. Fragmented screen sizes, XML nightmares, emulator lag that makes time feel fake. Their stack traces are longer than CVS receipts, but they persist because somebody has to build your calorie tracker app that uses AI, to give you a very wrong estimate of your current meal based on a single image. They also secretly dream of switching to Flutter just to stop crying at night. Now, let's talk about Jupyter Notebook. This isn't an IDE, it's a science lab. If you use Jupyter, you're probably knee-deep in machine learning models, or pretending to be, at least. You write three lines of Python and 20 lines of Markdown explaining why it didn't work. Your browser has 12 tabs open, all running Jupyter, and none of them are named. If someone tries to close one, you scream because that was the tab with the good variables. Jupyter users can't run a neural net without crashing their 128 gigabyte of DDR5 RAM, but somehow know how to implement gradient descent from scratch. And yes, your data is still dirty. Sorry, not sorry. Okay, now we get to Codium. Not VS Code, Codium. This is VS Code's cool cousin who doesn't trust Microsoft. It's basically the same thing, but without the tracking. Codium users are the open-source purists who drink from a flask labeled free as in freedom. They've replaced every default extension with a forked version. If you mention telemetry, they'll send you a link to a blog post and a 45-minute video essay. Their setup is clean, fast, and somehow entirely configured in a single settings.json file they've version controlled since 2018. Genie is next. If you're using Genie, you're either a minimalist or someone stuck in 2009. And I say that with love. It opens faster than any other IDE because it's basically notepad with ambition. Genie users just want to write code, compile it, and move on with their day. Just a fast, lightweight editor that doesn't crash even when your OS does. They probably write C, maybe some Python, and they absolutely do not care about your fancy plugin ecosystem. If your editor uses more than 10 megabytes of RAM, they consider it spyware. And finally, Microsoft Word. Yes, someone, somewhere, is writing code in Word. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Whether it's for a college assignment or the result of a copy-paste gone horribly wrong, they're doing it. No syntax highlighting, no line numbers, just you and the red squiggly lines. Word users don't compile code. They beg their professor to believe it would have worked. They probably changed all the quotation marks to curly quotes without realizing. Godspeed to anyone who tries to actually execute what they wrote. But hey, if you are looking to code something fancy that will distinguish you from the billion other devs out there, that's where today's sponsor comes in, Code Crafters. Their platform gives you access to unique projects that will help you stand out from the competition without the clown shoes and nose. Want to build an HTTP or DNS server from scratch? Check. Hell, you can even craft your own version of Git. All while others are still struggling to center that annoying div in their to-do app. You can start some projects free of charge, and if you use my link in the description, you can get yourself a whopping 40% off, so hurry up. Thank you for sitting through yet another tech rant, and if you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe to become a fellow codehead.